What about this this position that FaceTime, uh, the, the whole like addiction, anxiety and depression, because your position on that and we've done stories on this, of course, as, as the mother of three kids, I worry about this. You know, that we saw the social network, which showed us how Facebook is designed to be addictive and to keep you on there forever and to call information about you so that they know what will make you come on and they tap you on the shoulder digitally to get you to log on. And before you know, you've lost eight hours of your day or your kid has blah, blah, blah. You say correlation in terms of rising anxiety, depression rates, especially among teens, does not, it's not the same thing as causation. What do you mean? Yeah, I, I, I certainly think there are some addictiveness con concerns with social media and parents are well advised to tell their kids to get off their phones every now and then. I, 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 but we don't need any government intervention to do this, right? I don't, when I was a, when I was a kid, I was limited to, I was only allowed to play like one hour of video games a day. So you, you, my, that was, I, I would have been addicted to video games if not for that. We can use that. We can do that same thing. We can empower parents to limit the amount of time kids spend on their phone, no phones uh, in the bedroom because then they stay up all night. They're tired. And that's what I think the increase in anxiety is. They're not, they're not sleeping. Um, but if you look at the research, it seems to me like uh, some kids, uh, they do have negative uh, mental health outcomes because of social media, but also kids who are not on social media at all, they also have bad uh, mental health outcomes because they're, you know, they're kind of like loners who are not interacting with friends. They don't have friends. It looks to me like there's a, there's a good chunk of kids who are responsibly using social media or are using it in positive ways to connect with their friends. You know, think of the pandemic. I mean, the last two years, I, I think our, our young people are depressed because it was horrible. They were, they were forced to stay inside. School was shut down, extracurriculars. And I think social media was probably a net positive given that this was going on. It, it, was, it was something that we, like without that, they probably would have been even more depressed because mm -hmm. of, of what we went through. What about that, though? I don't really necessarily want the government to solve it for me, but you what about Facebook? What about, you know, Instagram? We just saw that terrible story about how that's led to increased suicidality um, amongst girls in particular who are all over Instagram, seeing these perfect images. And as much as the moms and the dads say, sweetheart, that's not real. That is like Kim Kardashian's got as much cellulite on her ass as the average woman mm -hmm. <laughs> that's been filtered. Um, it doesn't, you know, dealing with like a 13 or 14 year old girl and trying to like really make her understand that on a gut level is tough. And so I look, I'm afraid to even say this. So number one, shouldn't we just be pressuring the companies themselves to make a change, to make it less addictive and sort of less, I don't know, like crack. And number two, what if we did bring in the government? Because I hate to say it, but the Chinese... I hate to cite the Chinese who are engaged in an ethnic genocide for anything moral, but they are actually cracking down. They added a time limit for kids under 14 on their version of TikTok. They've banned nighttime use for teenagers. I'm like, should we be following the Chinese? I, the First Amendment will, I think, prohibit us ultimately from doing that. I, the, the video games, I think, is a, is a pretty good comparison because there were a lot of concerns that violent video games were making kids more violent. Uh, we now know that that research is totally bunk. And if anything, violent video games probably uh, deter the minority of kids who are violent because it gives them an outlet other than, than causing real violence. Uh, but anyway, the you know, very important Supreme Court case authored by by Scalia, you know, the arch conservative saying mm -hmm. violent video games are speech. You can't the, the government of the governor of San Francisco can't can't prohibit um, uh, 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 v vendors from selling these games directly to kids because it's a First Amendment issue. So I, I think that I think that's a pretty direct comparison here. So I, I don't I, 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 stri I don't think in a constitutional sense you can necessarily bring in the government. But I do. Again, I do absolutely think parents should talk to their kids about their social media use. Um, if it's having a, a, and also we can absolutely put pressure on the companies to make different changes. Yes, the problem here is really Instagram. I, it, kids aren't even on Facebook, frankly. Facebook yeah. is becoming boomer book. But there all there will be a new technology, right? Now there's TikTok. There's there's always something new. So this concern that oh we have to fix this is the thing we have to fix. Well, kids will eventually not be interested in that, and there'll be something else. You know, glossy magazines probably had some of the same body image issues, which is not to say yeah. it was like it was 100%. correct to bring up those things and to talk about them. I just, it just doesn't okay. feel like a new problem or one the government is any more likely to solve than these past ones.